All right, so on your John Quincy Adams page, follow along. Uh, John Quincy Adams was born in Massachusetts on July 11th, 1767. He was the son of John Adams, the original John Adams, the second president. He married Louisa Catherine Johnson in 1797 at 30 years of age, and he became a lawyer in Massachusetts. As a politician, he was a U.S. Senator from Massachusetts. He was the ambassador to Russia and Great Britain, and he died in 1848, a very important year. Lots of revolutions swept through Europe in that year, and in the United States, um, we, were, we were in the middle of it, the Industrial Revolution, and lots of great changes. All right, so John Quincy Adams. I can't figure out how to make the slide. Ah, there it goes. All right, uh, he was president from 1825 to 1829. He only served one term, and... Um, the election where he was elected and then the next election was really marked by sectional rivalry. If you remember, sectionalism is where people are only devoted to their section of the country. Uh, so, yeah, each section wanted their own candidate elected, and the three sections were the Northeast, the South, and the West. And between these three, well, four men that ran for president, John Quincy Adams ended up winning out, but um, many of the Americans were unhappy what happened is the Northeast kind of stuck together and voted for elected Adams, and the other two sections were split between William Crawford, Henry Clay, and Andrew Jackson. Now, what we really focus on during John Quincy Adams' pres presidency is the growth of transportation, and especially the building of the Erie Canal. And uh, here in Gloversville, you live no less than 10 miles from the Erie Canal. And it's really an amazing piece of, of engineering, an amazing accomplishment. And um, it's, I don't know if it's the longest canal in the world, but it's, it's got to be close. Uh, and for a long time it was. So lots of, lots of technology um, went into it, a lot of hard work, blood, sweat, toil. It's amazing. It goes from Albany all the way to Buffalo. And... Um, it connects the Hudson River with the Great Lakes. So after the Erie Canal was was uh, put into operation, ships could travel all the way from anywhere, from Europe, uh, from the coast, all the way from New York City up the Hudson River, and then west to the Great Lakes. And from the Great Lakes, you could get to all that Northwest Territory, Michigan, Illinois, Indiana, um, in Wisconsin, all of those big cities that would start to grow, Chicago, Detroit. Uh, so very, very important waterway. It, it was the most important transportation route between the East Coast and the Western farmlands and cities. So shipping costs were reduced by the Erie Canal because, as you know, shipping on water is way cheaper and faster than moving goods shipping on land using... using um, roads and wagons and animals. Um, look at that little table over on the top right. Um, uh, the canal boat, it cut the time that, a, uh, that goods were transported from 21 days to 8 days. And the cost, it's one-tenth the cost shipping by canal rather than a dirt road. So, um, I mean, the, the Erie Canal revolutionized shipping and transportation in the early 1800s and all the way through the 1900s and um, even today the Erie Canal is still used not even nearly to the extent it was but it's still an important lifeline between the Hudson and the Great Lakes. It is 363 miles long. It was dug by hand. I mean that's amazing. They're, they use dynamite but also mostly it was dug by hand by Irish immigrants. Um, it, from at any one point, it is 28 to 40 feet wide, 4 feet deep, and there are 84 locks. And locks um, hold the water back so that the canal, as you see here, it goes from, the canal goes from 500 feet in height all the way down to 200 feet in height from Buffalo to Albany, uh, from the Great Lakes to the Hudson. So um, it's really a marvel, a marvel that we're going to watch some videos about, hopefully. Um, the way that it worked is, after it was dug, these huge barge ships 
um, or bar well, just barges. It's a type of ship. They'd be pulled by mules or horses all along the canal. So on each side of the canal is a road that people would, you know, lead their horses, lead their animals on to pull these uh, canal boats, these canal barges. Um, all along the canal, towns sprang up, and all along the canal, farms sprang up because the canal was a great source of water for for farmland. And you see that as you go through the Mohawk Valley. Um, the town of Fonda and Fultonville and Canajoharie and Nelliston, Fort Plain, and um, all along, and Utica, they're all canal towns where people would stop after a good 20 miles or so, and they would have a, a place to stop and rest, water their horses, feed their animals, and um, unload some goods, maybe pick up more, and then move on. Uh, the Erie Canal was built by hand over an eight-year period of time. And in the end, Governor DeWitt Clinton, you can see in this picture, he's pouring a container of water from Lake Erie into New York Harbor during the opening ceremony of the canal. This was huge. This was extremely uh, impressive. The whole world looked at New York State and saw that we were doing some re something really great. Um, so... Hopefully you can get into studying the canal a little bit more, and since you live right near it, you really should take any, every opportunity you can to go and visit one of these places, the locks, or even the old sections of the canal that are still that are still here. Here's how a lock works. Uh, locks were used to get boats up and down between different levels of water, because the point of the canal is how do you get from the Hudson, which is only 200 feet high, up through, going upstream, to the Great Lakes. And so what they did was they used these locks um, where they would uh, build this little this little section where the boat could go in. There's my mouse. Can go into this little locked locked up section. Then it fills with water and then the ship the boat can sail out or be moved out um, onto the next level of water. And it's just like stairs. Think of a lock as work, working like stairs and lifting your foot up to the next level of the step and then up to the next and up to the next. So if you looked at the uh, at the Erie Canal from a bird's eye view, you would see stairs the whole way from Albany all the way to Buffalo. Um, here's an, a picture of a canal boat loaded with hay. You can play on it in the winter because it freezes over and it's nice and flat. Um, any kind of cargo could be shipped on it, and uh, can, there's a canal boat being pulled by a mule team, and up on the top there you see a tram, or like a cable car type of thing, going over a bridge. So um, as time went on, the canal still was used, and it was widened at some points, at certain points along uh, its existence. Eventually, we the New York State Canal Authority turned the Erie Canal into the Barge Canal. And what they did basically was they they dammed up, not dammed up, but they locked up the Mohawk River. So um, uh, some places you can see the canal off to the right or the left side of the throughway, and then you'll see the Mohawk River next to you. And ships are usually in the Mohawk River now rather than the canal. Um just because it ended up being cheaper to block off the Mohawk River, which was already there, rather than using uh, digging digging the Erie Canal. Here are some other pictures. You've got four different locks in this picture to get a ship from um, from one level to the next on the on the Erie Canal. Again, it's it's kind of like a ro it's it's a road built for ships for boats, rather than just using the natural waterways, rivers, and streams. Um, it's a road that can be controlled, it can be um, widened if necessary, it's, it's safer, it's really awesome. And then there's the Erie Canal song, and I don't know, a lot, not a lot of kids know this song anymore, so if you want to get some extra credit, or if you want to really wow me, and, um, or Mr. Wagner, you can find the words to the Erie Canal and sing it. Or even just mumble it at us, and we'll give you a mad pr 